Greetings, Valparaiso. This is Ken the Metal Professor. You are listening to Mostly Metal here on WVLP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana. I hope everybody is ready to make their ears happy for the next couple of hours because we have a special show tonight uh, in the studio already is a very special guest, Mr. Lotar Keller from Divinity Compromised out of Chicago. Thank you very much for coming in. Absolutely. Glad you found the place okay. You didn't yeah. you didn't see the building and go, nope, we're out of here. No. Didn't nope out of here. And... No, just one time circle back around, we got in here. <laughs> all right, great. Yeah. So we'll cross our fingers that all the technology, uh, the technology gods are with us. Yes. And what we're going to do is talk metal. Yeah. We'll talk about you guys. We'll talk about what you like. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us some stories about some of these songs. And, and we're going to try later on to, uh, to bring in a couple of other members of the band in a yep. phone call and see how yeah, that goes. Absolutely. So um, your, the, your most, your second CD, most mm-hmm. recent terminal yeah. just came out like July, July. Yeah. So not very long ago at all. No. Do you have any sense of how it's doing so far sales wise? Uh, you know, it's, it's, everything's always kind of just getting the word out there. Uh, so, so far there's, there's been some action, some reviews are starting to come out, everything, you know, getting a lot of positive feedback. Okay, great. Uh, so that's a good thing. I'm, I'm digging it. I've got, uh, I've got it here ready to go. And I mean, with, with in the next hour or however long you're willing to spend here, yeah. um, we'll play as much of it as we can. Now right. it, it did get a couple of songs did get flagged as probably no nose for radio broadcast. You One can, in particular. You know, <laughs> I, I, it would be a great tune to play, but yeah, yeah, well, I don't want to get you in trouble. That's well, yeah. thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. So what I'm, if, if I accidentally uh, pick up one of those, be, be sure to let me know, but uh, is it uh, shelter in place? Yes. Yeah. That's so the, the track listing. So I, I bought this on Amazon and, and the track yeah. listing comes with a little explicit yeah. flag already, yeah. which is, which is helpful. It, it does help. It's helpful. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is show host prerogative. I'm going to okay. start off with a song that I've picked, All right. which so far is my, is my favorite track on the disc and it's the last refugee. Which oh. I'm really digging. So, do you have anything fun to tell us about that song? Actually, yeah, I do. Um, if everybody comes out to the show at Wire, they'll get to see Paul Kerr come up and sing oh, it with us. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And that's Paul Kerr from November's, November's Doom. Doom. Yep. We will talk about that show Okay, coming up. That's going to be on October 15th. October 15th. Two, two Sundays from tonight. Yes. All right. So, let's kick things off. Uh, this is going to be The Last Refugee by Divinity Compromised off of Terminal. And then following that, uh, I will let Lotar pick a tune either off of his own disc or something that he just likes. And he, right. wants, to, he wants to play for folks. So we'll all see right. how that goes. It'll be a surprise for all of us. I don't know. Is that still part of the song? Nope. Oh, it's over. Finally. I think so. <laughs> yeah, that was a little weird. So we were thinking that's a it's got 30 seconds left to go, but it sounds like it's fading out pretty slowly and then this different noise comes in and we're all looking at each other like is the song really over? Like uh, it was very creepy. I guess so. But it is, you know, October is upon us. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And this is the best kind of music to have during October. Exactly. All right. Well, that was Exodus by Fate's Warning off of Awaken the Guardian and before that was 
shoot, I forgot that I played it. Now I forgot the a last refugee, the last refugee off of Terminal by Divinity Compromised, and it's horribly embarrassing to have forgotten that because the person who plays it and sings it is right here. Um, Lotar Keller from Divinity Compromised is here at WVLP for the night. Uh, so the the class level of this station has just has gone way up from uh, what it normally is on Sunday evening. So thanks for making the trip out yeah, absolutely. To, to do this. And you actually picked that song, yeah. the Fate's Warning song. Yeah, yeah. You want to say a little bit about? You know, that was always one of my favorite records from them. And last year when they played it at Prog Power, it was like, okay, I got to see this. Oh, my God. From beginning to end, it was amazing. Uh, I mean, I just, you know, John Arch was always, I always loved his voice. And I just... You know, the way that album was written from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know that was, that was one I was like, yeah, we got to do that one tonight. Who, so. is, who is your favorite? Because we have we both have been going there for several years now, and I missed last year, but you were there. We were both there this year at Prog mm -hmm. Power. So who was your, like, your favorite of, of this most recent year? Well, I was glad to see Metal Church. Yeah, that, that was one I hadn't seen. And since before. this is audio, he's sporting the Metal Church Atlanta I, I 2017 am actually, show. Yeah, from the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to wear it. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Metal Church is one that was like a, a must see. Uh, very impressed. Sounded great. Um, kind of blown away by Snowy Shaw. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, uh, it was uh, from beginning to end. We we didn't leave. Uh huh. We we walked in there and I was like, yeah, let's let's check some of it out. And it's like, <laughs> that is exactly I, what I, I did. Never, I uh, we were standing in the same spot. It was like near the end. I was like, oh my god, we were <laughs> here for the whole set. That was it. Was it was different? It was different. Uh, but it was it was nice how he gave tribute to all the bands that he played in and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that that was that was very cool. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what other Angel Dust was really good. Mm -hmm. They're they're a very good band. Um, you know, Lords of Black. Uh -huh. That dude. I mean, the, the Dio he can pull. Oh yeah. Jeez. Um, gosh, it was so many that we were trying to get through that whole weekend, and it was, it was interesting because it was a few that we didn't get to see, uh, Orphan Land being one of them, mm -hmm. and Pain. We actually came back and saw them when they played at Wire here uh -huh. in town. Uh, very interesting. Uh, they were really cool. My Wrath was good. Mm -hmm. um, gosh. I want to play a Twilight Force song pretty soon. Twilight so Force, okay. <laughs> she, I know she liked them. <laughs> yeah, they were great. They were great. They were a lot of fun. Um, it, metal metal needs a good dose of fun every once in a while to go go with all the seriousness. Well, exactly, exactly. So, so let let's talk about Divinity Compromise for mm -hmm. a little bit. So you guys have two discs: A World yeah. Torn and Terminal. Terminal's the new one. A World Torn came out in 2013, mm -hmm. and you guys have been pretty stable person person people wise, personnel wise. Yeah, pretty much since that point, um, we've pretty much been a solid unit since then. Uh -huh. um, you know, we did a couple of shows where we had. Uh, our guitar tech uh, fill in on bass one, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. once or twice. But other than that, we've we've been solid through. And you know the the difference between the two records is the first record was primarily Jeff and Vito wrote most of that material. Mm -hmm. And this record, everybody contributed. So mm -hmm. um, and everything that we're kind of still working on. I mean, it was a lot of material we didn't record on or put on uh -huh. the record. Um, so that stuff is still getting reworked, and we're going to be, you know, putting out some new stuff. Putting, out, yeah. putting out some new stuff after the uh -huh. new stuff. Exactly. That's good. All right, so let me let me run the roster here. I, I did have to cheat to do this, but yeah. uh, you have uh, Andy Bunk mm -hmm. playing bass and Ben Johnson keyboards mm -hmm. and guitars. You, vocals mm -hmm. and guitar. Uh, do you actually, play guitar? Not in this band. Okay. I, I did use the guitar to write a lot of the parts, okay. but... Uh, um, We've toyed around with the idea of maybe in future shows. Okay. Uh, do you do you play on stage at all, just for any of the backing for parts? For the Skull. That's the only band right now that I'm playing guitar mm -hmm. in. So, but we have talked about it as like maybe in the future I might pick up the guitar a few times. Mm -hmm. But the material for me to play and sing it at the same time, I'll just be honest, is like I don't want to take away from one thing right. just to do another. Uh, so it's better to let somebody else play that role and make sure that my part's right. Mm -hmm. So Now, as a guitar player, though, do you get to look over at them once in a while and go, what was that? <sighs> yeah. I'm going <laughs> to cut my hands off once in a while. Uh, we'll be talking to him soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, now it would be Jeff, Jeff Treadwell. Yeah, yeah. He's the lead guitarist. And yeah. then Mike, and I don't know if... Uh, Musel. Musel. Mike mm -hmm. Musel is the drummer. Mm -hmm. And so these are the five guys that have been, been there since 2013 yeah. when that first disc came out around yeah. then. That's great. 
That's good. Um, what is the, so for somebody, I mean, we've played one song. Right. But if you could describe the overall style of the band kind of in a, if you don't know who we are and you like these couple of bands, you might like what we do as well. Can you make any comparisons like that? Uh, if I were to pick three bands, Evergreen, Nevermore, and Opeth. That's a good crowd. Yeah. We like all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but those are the ones I kind of find us going towards the most okay. influence from. Yeah, and I on your I I poked around on your I you guys do not have a Wikipedia page yet as far really? as I can tell. That's Oh, uh, that's got to yeah. change. Um but Facebook is always a good place to go. Yeah. So I did th there's a nice little list of re of influences for the band in Facebook and and those mm -hmm. were in there's it's a longer list but those were yeah. in there. Um do you keep any of the I mean in the songwriting process then do you tr do you try to deliberately not sound like anybody do you come up with things and say no that sounds a little bit too much like this or that let's change it um, or do you just do what you do and i think a lot of us we kind of do what we do um because again with this record everybody was throwing hey came up with this right and and literally i mean all of us are borderline you know recording engineers so we're uh -huh. passing files back and forth <laughs> and almost complete renditions of each person writing all the parts you know mm -hmm. somebody's like oh here's the drum parts and the bass parts and the guitar parts roughly what i'm thinking uh a lot of it is some of it's all complete some of it's bits and pieces that we all mesh together uh some of us will come up with a skeleton here's a verse and a chorus mm -hmm. and some somebody else comes up with an entire midsection that becomes the the solo section per se or symphonic or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it and um with this pattern that we went about, it was like literally 18 or 19 songs, I wow. think, that we had built up to that we had to say, okay, now let's pick what we feel is right mm -hmm. now the strongest that we should work with at this moment. Nothing really went into mindset we are trying to sound like anybody. Mm -hmm. We just brought a lot of the influences that we've all gone through the years and sometimes we would literally use the names of like a band if we're like oh this part sounds like so and so but it wasn't like we did mm -hmm. it on purpose mm -hmm. it's just like somebody goes yeah that sounds just like blah okay yeah and then it's like so that's what we'll write it down as a working title for a bit um the lyrics actually in a lot of cases were done midpoint or came later mm -hmm. uh, because we were so locked into what the music was going to sound like do the lyrics come off as a kind of a group effort like the music does, or is there somebody who's um, a little bit more uh, more prone to be the lyricist? Andy did a lot of the lyric writing on this record. Okay. Um, I've done some. Even my father wrote a couple of the ones on this one. So he's always contributed to uh -huh. stuff I've done throughout my life. So um, Thanks, Dad. So basically, it's, yeah, right now it's like three people that have contributed to the lyric mm -hmm. writing. And fortunately, the concepts that all went into place were enough to where we felt like we weren't going too far off of a stray. Like, we didn't write this as a concept record. Mm -hmm. At least to me, I don't think it's necessarily a concept record. But we do tend to go a lot towards the same types of themes. Mm -hmm. So then when we feel like something's a little more dominating and kind of this sounds like the direction we're going, then we kind of gravitate towards that. And that's kind of how this went. Okay. Because some of the songs is like, yeah, we already know we want to call it this, you know. And Terminal was one of the ones that was originally, you know, Andy's baby, and it mm -hmm. came in. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, and it just rang as like a title track to me. Yeah, I, I don't know, it just it just did. So. And that sort of uh, either anticipates or segues very nicely into a question I'd written down, which is, uh, you know, like Iron Maiden. When you listen to one of their songs, more often than not, you're going to hear something that's historical or from literature. Mm -hmm. uh, Nevermore, their songs can be very, very political. Right. Um, do you? What are some of the themes that that you see bubbling up? In what um, you guys do. A lot of it seems to revolve around personal life experience, mm -hmm. and there is some politics mixed in. Uh huh. Um, I I think, especially considering you know the slight age range there is. Opinions are all ranged, and everybody can pull a little something from it, regardless of whether they really fully understand it or not. Mm -hmm. But um, so I guess if you were to really look in it, there's the only theme that we've really ever felt is what just comes out. 
and I think because of what we go through, that's just naturally where we go mm -hmm. to. So um, that's why you'll pick up a lot of things throughout the songs and, you know, that, okay, this doesn't sound like something that was just made up. Mm -hmm. This sounds like something that, okay. you know, somebody experienced. Uh, can so it's eight thirty, and mm -hmm. so I'll have we'll I'll do a station ID in just a second here. Okay, got to got to do that, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe we can pick another song off of the disc yes. that you can suggest mm -hmm. that you know might be a good sample of this, and we'll play the song, and then okay. uh, afterwards you can uh, talk a little bit about what was you know in the song in terms of lyrically and and themes, and then okay. we'll also see if uh, if we can get Jeff and or Mike patched in yeah. to have a bigger conversation. All right, sounds All right. good. So this is Ken the Metal Professor, and this is WVLP, LP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana. I hope everybody's having a good time listening to the conversation with Lotar Keller of Divinity Compromised, and uh, we're about to play another song off of the new disc, Terminal. And which, which one's your pleasure? Which one would you like to get out there to the people next well uh since we had a slight tinge of politics let's uh play the definition of insanity ah okay there we go so the definition of insanity off of terminal by divinity compromised you should hear right, me when i'm so... playing by myself hey. <laughs> <laughs> i play two All different right. ways you know sometimes i'll be experimental mode and I might even go backwards. You guys are on the air now. Oh, how you doing? We're on the air. You are on the air. So that was if, well, if we were just talking about rehearsal today. That's awesome. We can we can talk about that. Um can't, your, your your volume is a little bit low, my friend. All right. Let me see. Yeah, I can't I, hear you at all, really. Um Well, I don't know. Let's see. I've got where's my mic? Okay, so my mic is up as far as it can go. That's up now. Okay. As far as it can go. Well, I can hear you. Not too well, though, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, we can hear you guys great. Now let's, let's give Lotar a chance to talk and see if you can hear him. Can you hear me? Hello? Hey, Lotar. Yeah, you got me. Okay. So this this is going to work-ish. <laughs> going to work-ish. So uh, on, on the, I can't say on our phone lines because this is Lotar's phone plugged into the system here. But he worked his magic, and he made a multi-person call. And we have Jeff Treadwell and Mike Musel, uh, guitarist. Mosel, and, yeah. Mosel, and, and uh, guitarist and drummer from Divinity Compromised. And we just heard that song, The Definition of Insanity, off of Terminal. And Lotar told us a little bit about that tune and uh, that we could expect some political themes. Do you guys have anything about that song that, you know, is... It's good we played it because dot dot dot. Can you hear us? A little bit. You look pretty quiet though. Yeah. So I heard everything you said, but I don't have anything really okay. to say about that tune. All right. So I can't so, really hear anything to be honest. Oh, that's too bad. Um, so I've got yeah, I've got everything piped up as far as it can go. And well, we'll make we'll we'll do what we can. I I don't want to suggest. Lou Char, do you write the lyrics for that tune? That was Andy. The definition of insanity. What you guys yep. just played. Yep. So what was that about? Well, <laughs> it's it's basically uh, doing the same thing, same way, over and over. Nothing ever changes. Everything that's going on in the world right now, everybody's going nuts over. But it's like. <laughs> you see anything from like 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, they're all talking about the same garbage that we're complaining about today. Yep. It really, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So is, while we have everybody together here, um, let's take a second to talk about the show that's coming up. Yeah. It will be you guys playing with November's Doom and Without Waves, and there's a... Four, do you, I want to say Valhalla. It's not Valhalla. It's Ver Varaha or Varaha. Varaha. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Um, who's going to have the more depressing lyrics? You guys are November's Doom. That's a good question because I think we're kind of neck to neck on that. To be honest with you, um, 
you know, I don't, I don't even know if it's really something that's a contest, but uh, yeah, might be us. I don't know. And without waves, is that that's Ben's? Is that Ben's other group or who? There's somebody who's in without waves. It's um, also in a different Chicago band that I'm. I think. Yeah, it's and what, I, I, I thought it was somebody. I, I think it's one of the guys from November's Doom that's also in that band. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe Gary. That's Is it Gary. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay, so that's going to be next Sunday, October 15th. 15th. And that's at The Wire, which is in Berwyn. Mm-hmm. Got that right? And yep. what time, do you know? Uh, 7.30 is when they say the doors open, I think. About an hour away. What's that? Eight PM is when the show starts. Okay, so that's and that's a school night. It is. Yeah, that's going to be rough. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. But I mean, as far as uh, when shows can be done, I mean, it's you, 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 you really never even know. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the bands I like to go see, it's on a Tuesday night, and it's like, well, okay. If if Jeff and Mike can can hear me out there, uh, who, I can hear you. Okay, who who's the most exciting person in the band to watch on stage? <laughs> well, I'd probably keep your eyes on Lotar. Um, he's probably the most charismatic. Um, everyone else uh, definitely having fun all the time, uh, doing a lot of work and moving their fingers and arms a lot. <laughs> um, but you know, you know, and everyone is is pretty engaging with the audience these days. Uh, Lotar, especially. Mm-hmm. I just do what I do. You just got to watch that uh, hand that isn't on the microphone, you know? What, the one I'm always swinging around at the drumsticks? Yeah. <laughs> you get, you it get, depends on how well I'm uh, 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 mic'd, I guess. No, this is true. You had mentioned uh, rehearsal this afternoon. So how long, uh, how long a time do you guys rehearse when you get together? God, it's usually about two, three hours. It really hours. depends on... Um, whatever show we got planned up, I guess. We usually just look at whatever, how much time we have for our set, and then we just kind of decide on a list of songs to play and rehearse that, usually. Yeah, and we uh, are working on a cover, too, that we might play, time allowing, mm-hmm. uh, on Sunday. And uh, I guess we can spill the beans, and that's uh, going to be Evil Men Do from Iron Man. Oh, nice one. That was actually, yeah, I actually had that had on our, in my car today. Own, we had our own sound for that. You know, it sounds kind of, you know, obviously the notes are all there, but it, it's got that divinity sound, you know, a lot of uh, uh, types of sounds that we use, mm-hmm. tuning that we use, and rhythms, and so forth. Okay. How Do you know how much time you guys will have when you play? About 40 minutes. That's what I'm hearing. Roughly thirty, forty minutes, somewhere in that range. And what's the uh, what's the balance between? How do you decide on what the balance is between? I mean, obviously, you want to emphasize the new material, but is it exclusively new? Do you always try to fill in with a couple of older ones, or oh, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll be higher percentage new material, but we are definitely playing a few off the first record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, ten years from now, when you get hired to go play someplace and they want you to do a CD in its entirety. Which yeah. of these two CDs is going to be the one you pick? Whoa. I don't know. I need help on that, guys. <laughs> what was the question? If if down the road, 10 years down the road, we were to play an entire album in its entirety, which one would it be between the two? Of the two that we have right now? Yeah. It all depends on how far down the road, you know? Whatever album that we're most proud of at the time. And... Uh, and, you know, it's an obvious choice now, although we're already starting work on a, a new record. Yeah. Got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I, mean, I guess the way I see it, I would, if it's a question of which album I like better, I would go with the one, the most recent one, because I think it's a lot better than the first one, in my opinion. Yeah. Musicians never like anything they did more than two years ago. Oh, sure. That's, That's uh, true. <laughs> it's not an absolute rule, but... I, I I would say that I mean I do like to play stuff off of a world tour in our first album, um, but I mean I I I sprinkle the new me in there, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, sounds like a new spice. Sprinkle the new you. Yeah. <laughs> 
as t- yeah yeah our influences are always changing and and the, and and I like to approach the even you know the uh, a world's horn especially just because it's a little bit older right. with a f- fresh set of eyes you know and I like to play you know what was good on the album and then also change things and, and, and use whatever influences is really into my uh, drumming at the, at the time. Who do you have a particular kind of uh, influence or go-to person when you're trying to get inspired about drum playing? Well, I listen to all types of music and I play all types of music, you know, with different bands and, uh, and, and I think that, that, that right now, you know, we, we play, uh, I don't, I don't know what people call our style of metal, um, but music that I listen to, um, and, and drumming that I study, you know, I like to attempt to tastefully incorporate, you know, not overdo, but it's, it's, uh, a little bit more of a fusion style these days, at least what I'm studying, not mm-hmm. necessarily on music, mm-hmm. but when I improvise during rehearsal and, and I improvise probably a lot when I'm rehearsing alone and then a little bit less when I'm rehearsing with them and then slightly less yet at a show, but still definitely not always playing it like the album. Okay. Well, here's, here's what I'll ask you to do now. Um, We've played two tracks off of Terminal so far. I picked The Last Refugee as my favorite track on the disc so far. And then Lotar picked The Definition of Insanity. Mike, do you have a track off of here? Uh, not Shelter in Place, but, <laughs> but uh, okay. another track that we haven't heard yet that's got something in there that you're particularly proud of and that we should play next. I, I think that uh, at least what I was talking about just a minute ago, uh, a free to speak does does speak to me, no pun intended, uh, on as far as uh, you know outside influences from metal. Yeah, so I, I would bet on free to speak. That's a great tune. All right, you heard it here. It's this is going to be free to speak off of Terminal by Divinity Compromised. This is WVLP at 103.1 Low Power FM in Valparaiso, Indiana, and you are listening to my dad's obnoxious music. It is the top of the hour here on Mostly Metal. I'm Ken the Metal Professor. Hope you're enjoying this Sunday night and our visit with Divinity Compromised. One in person and two, I don't know if we'd call it virtually, but uh, at least technologically. And I'm going to see if I can patch them back in. So we've got Lotar Keller in the studio. And yes. Then we have Mike and Jeff through the telephone. <laughs> you guys are back on the air. Can you hear us? Hi. Yeah, I can hear you good. All, all right. right. Okay. I can barely hear you at all. Can you can you hear Mike when he talks? Can you hear can me? Hear Mike, I can hear Mike fine. Okay, uh, so I'll try to say something. M- Mike, Hello. Mike can relay the questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be like That's, a game of telephone, that works. literally. That works. Okay. Um, You're a little quiet, but I can still hear you. Okay. If you need interpretation, just just let somebody know, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> okay. Uh, sign language, please. So the song we just heard was uh, free, free to speak. Free to speak. Free to speak. I lost my place for a second there. Um, so that was Mike's pick. So Jeff, if you can, uh, if you can hear us, <laughs> um, or if Mike can pass the word to you. So Lotar has picked um, the definition of insanity as his kind of hold up tune. I had picked the last refugee as my favorite so far. Mike has picked free to speak. Of the songs that are left, not Shelter in Place. 
because <laughs> we're on the radio. We don't uh, want gonna... nasty letters from the FCC. Is there anyone that's a particular favorite of yours that we should play out there, and why? I'm going to go with Fall of Hysteria because that's um, that's probably the first new song we wrote for this album. Yep, and indeed. I just think it's, it's, a, it's just a fun song for me to play live. And yeah. I like the lyrics. I like. I think it's catchy. It's quick. It's catchy. It's heavy. That's why I like it. And that was the yeah no it's it's pretty straightforward and it's 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 got a, a, a quick heavy tone to it yeah and I really like the lyrics on that one. And that was the first one I'd heard off of the disc, other than the title track. Because is it the title track that's mm-hmm. on the the Prog Power sampler? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I actually played that a couple of weeks ago because I had the sampler with me, and. Um, so that was the first one I'd heard, and then I got the disc for myself and loaded it up into my car, and I was just randomly playing through songs on my car, and The Fall of Astoria came up. Just, I mean, I've got thousand, like 4,000 songs in my car, and this one came up yeah. just totally randomly, which was awesome. So that was the first time I got to hear it, and I did like it a lot. So um, I, will, uh, I will crank that out there over the airwaves right now. This is The Fall of Astoria off of Terminal by Divinity Compromised. And then maybe after this song is done, maybe we can hop back and take a listen to something off of the first disc. Sure. And yeah. on that one, my favorite is the title track. Okay. Is that good? That works for me. Okay. So maybe we'll, so that these guys on the phone aren't just twiddling their thumbs the whole time. We'll break in between the two songs, but that'll be the, the music plan. Is there you go. The Fall of Astoria here, and then after that, a world torn off of that CD of the same name. And that's The Fall of Astoria by Divinity Compromised off of Terminal. I'm Ken the Metal Professor. I'm here with Lotar Keller and on the phone, Mike, and I'm going to mess it up again. Mike Musel? <laughs> Sorry, I had you piped down, so you couldn't hear me and I couldn't hear you. Oh, it's no problem. It's Mike Mosel. Mosel. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down so that if I have to say it again, I'll have a phonetic guide there. And Jeff Treadwell. Jeff, are you still out there? Can you hear us a little bit yet? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. I'm going to do a real quick experiment here. Is this better? (laughs) Not really. Okay. So what I did was I literally just bent over the phone and screamed into the microphone of the actual phone. So now we know it's not a question of the, the microphone in the board versus the microphone in the phone. That was my technological experiment to prove that. (laughs) Um, So... Before I have to talk more, which is a bad idea, uh, I think, Mike, you had said that you'd be interested in talking a little bit about the some of the differences that you might see between the first disc that came out in 2013 and the newest disc terminal that just came out in 2017, and maybe some of the yeah, stylistic differences. Yeah, there's a lot differences. of differences. There's a lot of differences, and there's certainly a lot of time between them, um, which... which you know, as a musician, any musicians listening would certainly know that that time e- e- equals a lot of influence and change. Um, but aside from that, um, Vito Marchese from November's Doom in our upcoming show, mm-hmm. he was in the band and one of the founding members of Divinity Compromise and, and wrote a, a, a good portion as well as the rest of us of the first album, A World Torn. Mm-hmm. And, and just not having his presence as, as a writer, you know, he, he wrote a, helped write a great album, um, but he was not involved in this one. And, and just that alone would be a great change in the way that things sound. And, uh, and, and we we're also getting our confidence as a band and feeling each other uh, style and and we're able to uh, you know really start to complement each other after being a band for so many years mm-hmm. and you know I, I always say that the first album was a little bit more vanilla you know but not not entirely you know compared to the the new album Terminal has had a lot less of musical a lot more musicality excuse me. Mm-hmm. Do you think that if some a couple of years from now, if somebody who wasn't familiar with the band, you know, got a hold of the music from these two discs and listened to them without any referencing, could they tell which one came first? I think it would be easy. Yeah. Um, I think it would be a really good example of what you're saying. I think that, you know, there would always be that guy 
course. But in general, I think it would be easy to tell what came first. Yeah, but we have we have uh, simpler, more straightforward songs on the new record too, and and they were very challenging numbers on the first album as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even just talking about complexity, but but yeah, we've really grown as a band. <laughs> Is there anything that you've written and put on this new disc that when it comes to then playing it live, you're like, oh, man, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have done that? <laughs> Hell yeah. Heck yeah. You know, um, especially the, the first, uh, I don't know which one you played first, but the definition of insanity is 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 one that I'm, uh, it, it's very challenging to play, but uh, each song has has its parts where, where. It really pushes me to the limit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definition of sanity is probably the most one of the most difficult. There's actually one song that didn't make it on the album that we might be uh, releasing later, and there, that song that wasn't released has some really insane parts in it. Yeah, but agreed. I think for this album, definition of insanity is probably the worst on the play. Okay, the worst meaning the best. Difficulty wise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The worst song ever. No, <laughs> the worst uh, as far as uh, uh, being, you know, really yeah, not not like worse than bad, but like hard to play. I mean. Right, right, right. It's actually super awesome. Um, I mean, everyone, you guys already heard it. Um, I, I really like that song. I'm looking forward to playing it live, which we have not yet. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously, I can play it, but. Uh, I need to definitely rehearse that tune a little bit more. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Well, it it bears repeating plenty of times in case people have kind of come in and, and gone out on the listening end of things, but we're, the, the show we're talking about, you guys playing live, is going to be two weeks from today, October 15th at The Wire in Berwyn, Illinois, and you're playing with November's Doom and <laughs> Without Waves, and we should have taken our last break to make sure we had this other band's name right, Varaha, V A R A H A. Sounds right. I think. Um, so, do you have any other gigs lined up in the near future besides that one? Uh, currently in the booking stages, so there's going to be more announced. Uh, just waiting on confirmations. Okay. So. Is there any particular benefit to being on a bill? So, obviously, November's Doom will be the the headlining band right. at this show. Is there any particular benefit to being on a bill like that as opposed to just doing a show of your own and, and kind of being your own headliner? Um, you know, I, 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 th- I think there's a lot of benefits um, to doing shows like that with, you know, like November's Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on the kind of band we are. I mean, if we wanted to go out and play every weekend, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's not that we couldn't, um, but I, I don't think the impact would be is is right much mm-hmm. and so it, to us it's a little more important to make sure that the quality of what they're going to get a few times here mm-hmm. is better than mm-hmm. going and saturating right and so we're we're really trying to be careful of not overplaying um not to say that we don't want to play because we do like to play uh it's just a, a matter of giving people something more fresh when we're not like beat to death playing three nights in a row locally mm-hmm. um but we are going to do, you know, some touring. Um, we need to to support the record. Right. Um, it's, in, it's inevitable. I mean, even even with the amount of market saturation you can do on the internet, uh, the numbers are proven over and over again. Um, when you get seen in front of people, you know, your numbers do go up uh, unless you want to pay a lot of money in marketing. And right. that's just. I think there's something to take away from the experience of seeing a live band. I still mm-hmm. personally enjoy it, and I know that there's other people that do as well. I mean, obviously, we see it every every year when we go to Prague Power, mm-hmm. you know, the enjoyment of those people when they go to those shows. Um, <clears throat> it's, you know, it'd be nice to get that excitement back again. Um, <clears throat> you know, it almost seems like for people, it's like it's almost an inconvenience, eh, you know. Um, and it shouldn't be like that. I mean, I you know, even back in the day, I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to go see this. You know? mm-hmm. Because they only come through once or twice a year, as opposed to uh, I'll catch them next week. Right, right. You know, so, all right. So we're going to dive in and take a listen to the title track off of Divinity Compromised' first disc, "A World Torn." Now the track is called "A World Torn Apart," 
and the disc is just a world torn, mm -hmm. right? So technically, it's not the title track, but I bet I've called it that, and we'll continue to call it that, and I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> so anyway, we do, too. <laughs> a, a World Torn Apart by Divinity Compromised. Awesome. And that is the title track-ish off of A World Torn. The song is called A World Torn Apart. That's by Divinity Compromised from back in 2013. That's their first of two full-length CDs that they have so far. And I'm Ken the Metal Professor. This is WVLP 103.1 FM. And with me in the studio uh, for the last hour and 20 minutes now, this is, this is going by fast, it's Lotar Keller from Divinity Compromised. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah, absolutely. And we just uh, finished on the phone with Mike Mosel and Jeff Treadwell. Did I mm -hmm. do it right that time? You did. I, I nailed it that time, and now it's not even, even here. I've even screwed up all these years. <laughs> but yeah, they were they were nice enough to call in and uh, deal with um, deal with trying to listen to us and what we were saying through the phone patch. But we got got some good conversation in there and learned a little bit more about the band. And one of the uh, the interesting thing that's come up a couple of times is that you are, I mean, this is what you're kind of occupied with currently, but mm -hmm. you also have spent recently time playing with the skull. Mm -hmm. And for folks that don't know who that is, now let me see if I got this right. Mm -hmm. That's the, so one or more people for the, from Trouble, mm -hmm. that used to be in Trouble, and then their project is now called The Skull, and they're right. doing, they're playing old Trouble tunes it, or it, so how's that working well the band started off originally with the whole idea is we were going to play the music off the first records um after a couple of years of doing it the interest in writing our own material came about and so we did and so we released the first record which was for those which are asleep um it's done very well we've done a couple of ep releases um and now we're currently in the process of working on our second record. Mm -hmm. now. Great. Um, this is this is kind of do this is doomy. It's do it? yeah. It's definitely more on the lines of doom metal. Um, you know the people have compared it to saying it's more. You know it's like some of the early trouble writing, but it's got our own style to it too. Because mm -hmm. again, I mean, I you know I'm, I'm coming with some of my writing influence as well, but. Uh, it's, it's done very well. I mean, we played Hellfest last year in, uh, France. We did four and a half months worth of touring mm -hmm. in general last year, uh, with more coming on the horizon. We're doing two weeks starting at the end of this month. We're, uh, playing at the Metro actually Halloween night with, uh, Coven. And, uh, I think High Priestess is the other band that's playing with us that night. And then we're doing, uh, some Midwest States, Heading down, I know we're playing a festival down in Houston, and then mid-November it's back to studio again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's been that's been going well. But with that band, I just play guitar. So I do backup vocals, uh -huh. you know. But uh, you know, it's it, I get to do both, just not at the same time. And when you have to take off for a tour like that, extended, is that? pretty constant where the you know you have to tell your your job see ya i'll be back later and they say okay catch you then does pretty that, much. everybody works that out uh well i'm i'm on a freelance basis so it's basically it's all based on my availability mm -hmm. you know i just say i'm not going to be here these dates okay when are you going to be back tell them and they put me back on the schedule so it's a it's a beautiful nice. thing that i really is, can't ask great. for more than that mm-hmm that's got to make it a lot easier than it would be otherwise. I just don't get paid when I'm gone. Well, sure. That's it. I'm mm -hmm. paid when I'm there. So, um, Speaking of paid-ish, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about how folks, first of all, um, people that want to keep keep up to date with Divinity Compromised or maybe mm -hmm. your goings on with the skull. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways they can do that? I mean, social media-wise, yeah. on the yeah. web? What, what are uh, Facebook, website. Um, divinitycompromise.net mm -hmm. uh, find us on Facebook as well I know we have a Twitter account uh, on the skull uh, you can find us also on Facebook um, the website I think is actually trouble the skull dot com okay uh, but if you you go on f Facebook you'll find us as well All right. Um, and 
I was thinking about this in, in terms of, of money and, mm-hmm. and cash and stuff. Merchandise. Mm-hmm. Is there divinity compromised merchandise out there? There is. <clears throat> um, both physical and uh, digital, of mm-hmm. course. So we, we did still press CDs. Um, any of those are available through Amazon, CD Baby. Uh, if anybody who's in Europe, we have a label there, No Dust Records, that's carrying mm-hmm. our stuff. Um, and pretty much any of the major digital download outlets, iTunes, Amazon, uh, I think we're pretty much in just about all of them anyway. Definitely on Spotify. So. And T-shirts. And t-shirts. If you want any of that stuff, go to our website. Or you can, you, you can even contact us directly. Just mm-hmm. send, send a message, say, hey, we want to get this stuff. We'll, we'll respond. I mean, we, we handle our own domain. So okay. if fans do want to write us, definitely um, don't fear. And <laughs> send us a message. And, and you haul that stuff out to gigs? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have everything at the gigs. Um, everything will be handled properly. We do take credit card as well. So do you make, put that do you out make there. big boy shirts like triple extra large? We have a couple. We have a couple okay. bigger shirts. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put you on the spot here okay. and ask you to pick out one more, one more Divinity Compromise tune off of either disc that we haven't okay. heard yet that you want people to take a listen to, and then while that song's playing, okay, I will ask you to pick something else that isn't Divinity Compromise. It's just you know like the like the Fate's Warning song, just something that speaks to you, that's okay. important to you, that's been an influence or okay, whatever it is. All right. Ah, so if I were to pick something right now, Saving Grace. Oh, excellent. Because that is my other favorite, second favorite song. So Perfect. Off of this disc. I, and, it's, and it finishes the record out. It does. And it's 9.30, so I will mention once more, one more time that this is WVLP, LP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana, also streaming on WVLP.org. And maybe you're catching us on the TuneIn radio app. And this show is almost exclusively the Divinity Compromised uh, version of Mostly Metal, although Fate's Warning did sneak their nose in Mm -hmm. a while ago. And somebody else is going to sneak in just a minute. Oh, and Twilight Force, they were in there as well. But other than that, it's been all about Divinity Compromised, including this song, Saving Grace. Well, that was surprising. I had planned on going right in to the Yes song you had picked, Starship Troopers. Um, I got the disc in the player. It was queued up to track three, and then I pressed play, and then it just uh, it just didn't do anything except skip to track four. So maybe <laughs> the gremlins are definitely getting us. But uh, let's, let's see. So you know what? What, what we're going to do here, we're going to play a little 10 questions, and I'm going to ask right. those 10 questions All right. while I'm dialing up Starship Troopers uh, a different way. Because right? I have these 10 questions here because I really, you know, at WVLP, we ask the tough questions, and I mm-hmm. have to get to the bottom of you as an artist mm-hmm. uh, and as a musician. And, and so these 10 questions, kind of free association. Okay. And we'll, we'll, just, we'll just see where you are All right. in there. So question number one is cats or dogs? Oh. <sighs> Cats are loyal. Dogs are cute. All right, cats. Oh, we're off to a bad start. Okay, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Fender or Gibson? Uh, Gibson. Any particular reason? I don't know. I don't. I. I, I, I do like Fenders. I, I've got a, a Fender Stride I love, uh, but when it comes to the tone that I'm always looking for, I always go to the Gibson. Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin? Sabbath. Good. Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead? This is embarrassing. I've watched neither. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is this is shocking. This we, is very awkward. We may have what, to we uh, may have to devote another segment you, to getting okay, to the bottom of this. Uh, but I will say that um, we have talked uh, that, that, the quest to start watching Game of Thrones, I've been told by many people that I do need to watch this. So, we'll have an update. Okay. Thin crust or Chicago style? Chicago style. There we go. A small, engaged crowd or a large but quiet crowd? Small, engaged. Very good. Halford or Dickinson? 
Dickinson. Yeah. Bay Area Thrash or Gothenburg Melodic Death Metal? Gothenburg. Yeah, nice. Any particular favorites? I like Opeth. Mm-hmm. Enslaved. Okay. And you've also made my station manager, Greg Kovach. Hi, Greg. You've made him very happy because he is a huge Opeth fanboy. Perfect. So now you're in his good graces. He's probably going to friend you on Facebook yeah, now. I'll accept. Okay, and here we go. This is question number 10, and this is, this is the important one. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Ah, okay. That's two weeks in a row I've had somebody give me that answer. I'll, I'll allow it. Okay. But I'm hoping that somebody else will come in and say Star Trek at some point. I didn't, again, I like both, but if I had to go with what grabbed me when I was a kid, that was uh, Star Wars. There we go. Okay, well, I hope, thank you for participating in this experiment. I, I have no idea what I learned from it, but it did I, allow me to stall long enough that I do have Starship It made Starship me think Troopers. about things a lot more, I'll tell you. <laughs> I do have Starship Troopers ready to go now. Uh, why, why this track? I love the ending. I, I love the flange tone and the clean guitar and, and Squire's, I, I just call it a bass solo at the end. To me, it just, to me, it's just cosmic. It's amazing. All right. So nine and a half minute song yeah. because you like the end. I okay, love the end. here we go. All right, Starship Troopers by Yes. And this is great because my show is called Mostly Metal. And that's because mostly I play metal, but I do, you know, we just off the air, we were talking about Alan Parsons and we both mm-hmm. dig Alan Parsons and I've played Alan Parsons on the show. So every once in a while, I got to drop something in there that you isn't metal to break it up. So that's, this is today's sample. All righty. All nine and a half minutes of Starship Troopers. And even at nine and a half minutes, that's pretty short for a Yes song. Uh, it is. Was that Tales of Topographic Oceans is like a double, <laughs> a double <laughs> album and it's four songs? Yeah, 30 minutes, one side. <laughs> that's awesome. I used to get a kick out of bands that like uh, I had a record by The Outlaws when I was a kid. They had a double, a double album. I miss yeah. double live albums. I did too. Um, it was called, I think it was called Double Trouble Live. And they have a song called Green Grass and High Tides Forever, which mm-hmm. on their first back then record you know actual vinyl album or eight track maybe even back then it was about a i guess maybe an eight to ten minute song and then the live version is an entire side of a record 26 minutes of just guitar jamming yeah humble pie rock and the fillmore that was another one mm-hmm. uh the the b record had one song on each side well as a guitarist now in, in uh Divinity Compromise, you're concentrating on vocals, but yeah. in the skull, you're mm-hmm. a guitarist. Yeah. As a guitarist, what are like one or two performances, like maybe even even live solos or something that have been captured on records or whatever that really stand out to you as classics? Oh, just to like in general? Yeah, sure. Just um, anything. Wow. What should um, people be listening to? Aspiring guitarists. Go out and listen to this person play this on that record. Ooh, well, that's tough because there's so many good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, if you're trying to pick something that's like a key riff that maybe somebody's played that just sticks out in your head. Um, I mean, Eddie Van Halen's done mm-hmm. quite a bit. Um, Jimmy Page has done his share. But even well, that, that's another one, Dazed and Confused, right, on The Song Remains the Same. Isn't yeah. that the one that's like an entire album it's, album side long? Yeah. I mean, and you know, you even consider guitar players like Frampton who whether you like it or not, the talk box got really popular after that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> um I actually grew up listening to Frampton from Humble Pie years, um, with the whole Rock and the mm-hmm. Fillmore record. Um you know, some of that stuff, it was, I mean, to me, it was like iconic. Like they, they did the I Don't Need No Doctor, which I know Wasp did a remake of uh-huh. later down the road. Um, but as far as guitar players that I, I, Steve Howell, I guess, you know, since we just listened to Yes, uh-huh. I mean, to me, that lead at the end is. Uh huh, sure. Some of the lead stuff that he always pulled off back in those days was just. To me, like it's just a rock and roll lead. It just kind of mm-hmm. grabs you that way. It's kind of like what people think of Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones. Yeah. I mean, he he 
he's not a virtuoso, but he wrote some iconic mm -hmm. parts that you don't forget. Mm -hmm. And I think it, to me, it's it's a matter of not how many notes, but it's how they're played. Right. And so. and when you hear it, you can't imagine it being played otherwise. No, no. They, it's like I can hand my guitar to somebody else. They're not going to play my rig and sound like the way I do. It's mm -hmm. it, it's what comes out of that individual. So cool. So my I think my favorite is not as a guitar player. So this mm -hmm. may be just eye rolling. I don't on your part. I don't know, but the, one of the ones that I always think of is uh, Buck Dharma's solo in the live version of Astronomy on uh, Some Enchanted Evening. I don't know if you've heard that before, but it's you know it's totally different than what's on the record, and it's okay. just it's one of these guitar solos that I can listen to over and over and over, and every note is perfect. It's just a total jam out for for three or four minutes, wow. and it's it's amazing. Um, but less about the Oyster Cult, more about Divinity Compromise, because yeah. we're we're winding down on time here. So, uh, and I don't even know if we'll be able to fit in uh, an entire song at this point, because there's four minutes left. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, we get a replay of Punk Rock Radio, which All is right. more obnoxious music played on WVLB. Perfect. Um, that will kick in at 10. So maybe we can uh, start into one more song, and if we have to fade it out, okay. so be it. Uh, but we've played uh, several tracks off of Terminal. We've played one track off of A World Tour. And if there's one more song that people need to hear at least part of from Divinity Compromise to get warmed up for that gig in two Sundays in Chicago, what should it be? Children of a Dead God. And that's on a World, World Torn? Torn. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dial that up. Where's my mouse? There it is. I'm going to dial it up. And while I'm doing that, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. This has been a blast. Thanks the for two having hours me. disappeared very, very quickly. So one last time, Lotar Keller, a yes. vocalist from Divinity Compromised. And thanks to Jeff and Mike for dropping in by telephone mm -hmm. for a little bit earlier. This has been a blast. Uh, Divinity Compromised on Facebook might be the most direct way for folks to get out there and be in touch and learn what's going on. Absolutely. Okay. And so here we go. Closing things out. Children of a Dead God, the lead track off of A World Torn. <laughs>